Hello everybody, this is Oddjob Entertainment bringing you another video. And today, I want to tell you that lasers are boring. The footage on screen comes from Hybrid V Audio's Tailgunner video. That video is very much not boring and you should definitely check it out when we're done here. But the huge amount of laser fire on screen helps me to drive the point, lasers are boring. <laughs> At least boring compared to what they could be. Why am I making this video now? Well, with the impending release of 3.18, CIG has started to talk about weapon diversification. So rather than all laser peters in a given size dealing the same DPS, there will be variation. But I want more variation than what they are implying. In fact, I want a lot more. So I want to seed some ideas in the hopes that the right people see this and make it happen. Picture this, if you will. You find yourself in the midst of a massive space battle in Star Citizen. Laser blasts are flying in every direction. There's the Javelin firing off its massive turrets. It's facing off against an Idris with turrets of its own. Fighters are dashing across your field of vision. There's explosions and chaos all around. Now focus on those bright red laser blasts. Try to envision the overwhelming number of them as they fill your vision. Now, take that scene and freeze it in your mind. Follow just one of those laser blasts back to its origin. Can you? What size weapon did it come from? And how do you know? I hope this word picture we've made together illustrates the point I want to make. All the lasers in Star Citizen are the same. Now of course, they differ in damage output and fire rate. But visually, they are all identical red blasts. This can tend to be a bit confusing to interpret, and I even have proof of that. If we look at this promotional image of all these different fighters around this Idris, we can see what I believe to be some mistakes in the trajectory of some of these laser blasts. They seemingly come from the size 5 guns on the Idris turret, but somehow are crossing in front of the much closer Gladius. Now I'm not trying to overly criticize the artist. I made a mistake of my own when I recolored this image which you might find later on. But I point this out because if it was confusing to the artist, is it not just as confusing to players? Now compare this to the Sandstorm in Attack of the Clones. We can't really see any of the individuals firing, but we know what direction the blasts are coming from at a glance. A key element in achieving this is the contrasting color of the red and blue laser blasts. We can see how much a role this plays by getting rid of that color. All of a sudden, it's much more ambiguous and the direction and path of each blast is much more difficult to determine. Star Citizen suffers from something similar. While it provides a wholly unique level of immersive ship-to-ship -ship combat, there's three colors that encapsulate all the weapons in Star Citizen with only very limited exceptions. Those colors are light blue for distortion, red for lasers, and a pale yellow for ballistics. The shapes of all these projectiles are very similar as well. Can you tell in this image if this ship is firing ballistics or lasers without any color info? But what I'm proposing would throw a lot more color and shape variety into the mix. Starting with color, light as we perceive it is a narrow band on the electromagnetic spectrum. Lasers can be made to fire in any part of this spectrum, but we are most familiar with those that sit in the visible range. Commonly, we see blue, red, and green. There are, of course, a lot more than just these colors, orange, yellow, purple, cyan, just to name a few. Another characteristic of this visible light spectrum is as we move across from left to right, the energy of the light rays is increasing. Red is the lowest energy and purple or violet is the highest. Can you see where I'm going with this? What if these colors were split across the different weapon classes in Star Citizen? For instance, what if a size 1 repeater or cannon fired red projectiles, but a size 2 fires orange projectiles? Size 3 yellow, size 4 green, size 5 cyan, size 6 blue, and size 7 purple. This does a couple things right off the bat. If you see some red blasts coming towards you, they don't pose as much of a threat as seeing even a single purple blast. You would know at a glance more or less how much damage you are about to take, and whether or not you can survive. This informs your flight maneuvers to avoid the higher DPS blast because now you can prioritize based on color. At a glance, you know what size weapons your opponent has equipped, and the increase in variety in large battles now makes it more apparent who is shooting and from where, 
just as we saw in Attack of the Clones. And let's be honest, wouldn't pretty colors influence your shopping as well? If you can size up your weapons to shoot like a TIE fighter, wouldn't you? You'd suddenly have a very noticeable way to customize your loadout visually. But odd job, you say. What about those distortion weapons and ballistics? How do they fit in? Well, shape is another way to convey information. As it stands right now, all of our projectiles have the same basic shape. But what if cannons had a larger, more cannonball-like projectile? Or what if their projectile was more elongated? What if, as you size up in distortion, you have more dramatic particle effects both at the muzzle and in the projectile? Shape gives us another way to visually distinguish them. It should be easy to see then that we can dramatically increase the variety of projectiles on screen and at the same time convey a lot more information quickly to the player. While we're talking about different kinds of projectiles, let's also talk about another detail in the Clone Wars. We need beam weapons. Now I have it on really good authority that these are coming. It's been data mined in the game files and there are some unused beam weapons in the game. But man, I can't wait. What if the Ares Ion, for instance, shot a beam instead of a cannon? Pinpoint accuracy, but you need to maintain target contact to be effective? Seems like a pretty good weapon against big ships. And it could be okay against small ships in the hands of a competent pilot. What if it dealt progressively more DPS with maintained contact? That could be another way to distinguish the anti-big boy properties of the Ion without making it too overpowered. On the ballistic side, we have the Inferno with its Gatling, but we don't exactly have a laser analog to the ballistic Gatling in the verse. So super fast laser Gat? That's another idea. But with all of these, imagine how much more exciting it would look with more colors available. More chaotic, sure, from a surface level anyways. But to the trained eye, it becomes a wealth of information in addition to being a lot of mesmerizing pretty colors. That's one of the primary reasons the Empire in Star Wars shoots green while the Rebels shoot red. It gives a clear visual distinction to determine what's going on at a glance. It's also why the Death Star shoots a beam instead of just a massive laser blast. George Lucas needed a way to convey the immense power of this battle station. It needed to be visually distinct. Of course, after the fact, the visual distinctions were worked into the lore to provide some kind of explanation besides just being pretty contrasting colors. The visible light spectrum based approach I am suggesting does the same thing. It provides a good reason to make them different and does so in a way that can actually help players and enhance gameplay. More information as a player, more customization options, and a more in-depth variety of weaponry. That seems like a win, 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 win to me. Of course, that is just my opinion, and I want to know what you think. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. As for our Grow the Channel giveaway, I've teamed up with Monster Tech to give away a set of desk or chair mounts. Monster Tech makes bomb-proof products that are well-built and fun to use. I've really enjoyed using my custom chair from them, and it has been a huge boon to my gaming experience. And if you want to win a set of desk or chair mounts from Monster Tech, subscribe and leave a comment with the secret word. Each video is another chance for an entry, and a winner will be selected once the channel reaches 1,000 subscribers. Today's secret word is the name of the ship with the misplaced blasts crossing it in the artwork. Beyond that, let me know what you think of this topic. Would laser color influence your loadout? Would you make any other changes to laser weapons in the game? Please share your thoughts below. Until next time, this is Oddjob Entertainment, signing off.